America's empire of money has reached the end game, Michael Snyder reports. We did it, Joe. It took a tremendous push down the stretch, but the U.S. national debt was able to hit the $34 trillion mark before the end of 2023. At this moment, I'm just so overwhelmed that I don't know who to thank first. Over the past few years, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, Kevin McCarthy, and so many other hardworking spenders have been instrumental in helping us reach this remarkable achievement, and we never would have gotten here without the relentless help of CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, New York Times, Washington Post, and all of the other mainstream news outlets that kept assuring the American people that it was okay to steal trillions of dollars from our children and our grandchildren. Of course, I'm being quite facetious. The truth is that we are doing what we are doing to future generations of Americans beyond criminal. We're literally committing national suicide, but each election cycle, most of the same big spending politicians just, just keep winning over and over again. And those on the other side would argue that it's been absolutely necessary to borrow and spend so much money. If we had not propped up the U.S. economy with giant mountains of borrowed money, it would have collapsed long ago. In addition, spending so much money allows us to project military and economic power all over the planet. If we only spend what we brought in, America's standing in the world would be greatly reduced. Having the primary reserve currency of the world is an enormous source of power, but now that power is fading. Nations all over the globe are starting to move away from, the, from using the US dollar in international trade, and they are becoming a lot more hesitant to buy our debt. You can only borrow and spend so much before the entire Ponzi scheme collapses, and at this moment we are more than $34 trillion in debt. U.S. national debt has reached a record high, hitting $34 trillion for the first time in history. Data published by the Treasury Department on Tuesday showed that outstanding federal borrowing soared to $34.001 trillion on December 29, just weeks ahead of Congress deadlines for new federal funding plans. The staggering figure, which is a major point of contention between Republicans and Democrats, is equal to $101,233 in federal debt for every person in America, according to Peter G. Peterson Foundation. So if there are four people living in a household, your share of the national debt is more than $400,000. And every day the debt keeps getting larger. As Wolf Rich Richter has, has pointed out, the size of the national debt has increased by $2.5 trillion in just the last seven months. The total U.S. debt, national debt spiked by $1 trillion in 15 weeks since September 15 to $34 trillion according to the Treasury Department's figures this afternoon. In the seven months since the, de the debt ceiling was lifted, the national debt spiked by $2.5 trillion. These are huge, gigantic numbers that are piling up as a result of the incredible hard-to-fathom, daredevil, reckless, shake-your-head deficit spending by Congress. Overall, the U.S. national debt has grown $6.25 trillion since Joe Biden entered the White House. It took the first 225 years of U.S. history for the U.S. national debt to reach $6 trillion mark, and now we've added more than $6 trillion to the debt in less than three years. This is what the end game looks like. We're in a debt spiral, and that is totally out of control, and there's no way that this story is going to end well. And despite the fact that we are endlessly pumping colossal piles of cash into the economy, our economic conditions continue to deteriorate. On Wednesday, we learned that U.S. job openings have fallen to the lowest level in more than two years. U.S. job openings in November dropped in November to the lowest level in more than two years. The latest evidence that the Federal Reserve interest rate hike campaign is continuing to cool the labor market. That's a sign that the economy is getting worse. And more large companies continue to lay off workers. For example, Xerox just announced that it will be laying off 15% of its workforce. Xerox on Wednesday announced it will cut 15% of its workforce as part of a plan to implement a new 
organizational structure and operating model, Xerox, which offers digital printing and document management technologies, had about 20,500 employees as of December 31st, 2022, according to a filing with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Based on this figure, Wednesday's layoffs will affect about 3,075 employees. Shares of Xerox closed down more than 12% following the announcement Wednesday. So what can we do to get the economy going again? Well, we can follow the example of the federal government and borrow and spend even more money. Of course, much of the nation is already drowning in debt. According to one recent survey, only about half the country will be able to pay off their December credit card balances in full. Only half of Americans' credit card customers believe they can pay off their December balance in full, according to an industry index, signaling a low ebb in credit card confidence as a nation emerges from the holidays. The Lending Tree Credit Card Confidence Index, a monthly survey published since 2018 by the personal finance site, dipped to 51% in December, an all-time low. In a nationally representative survey of 1,514 cardholders, only 51% voiced confidence and they, that they could pay off their card balance this month. In November, the confidence index stood at 58%. Our forefathers handed us the keys to the greatest economy machine in the world history, but that was never enough for us. We always had to have more, and so we just kept borrowing and spending. Now the end game has arrived and it's going to be excruciatingly painful. U.S. consumers are drowning in record levels of debt. U.S. corporations are drowning in record levels of debt. State and local governments are drowning in record levels of debt. And the federal government is drowning in record levels of debt. America's empire of money was nice while it lasted, but now the jig is up and the collapse that is looming is truly going to be one for the history books. This is by Michael Snyder, and he says about the author, my name is Michael, and my brand new book entitled Chaos, now available on paperback and Kindle on Amazon. In addition to my new book, I've written seven other books available on Amazon, including Seven Year Apocalypse, Lost Prophecies of the Future of America, The Beginning of the End, and Living a Life That Really Matters, Commissions Earned. When you purchase any of these books, you help to support the work that I'm doing. And one way that you can really help is by sending copies as gifts to family and friends. Time is short and I need help getting these warnings into the hands of as many people as possible. I've also started a brand new Substack newsletter and I encourage you to subscribe so that you won't miss any of my articles. I've published thousands of articles on the Economic Collapse blog, End of the American Dream and the Most Important News. And the articles that I publish on those sites are republished on dozens of other prominent websites all over the globe. I always freely and happily allow others to republish my articles on their own websites but I also ask that they include this about the author section in each article. The material contained this article is for general information purposes only, and readers should consult licensed professionals before making any legal, business, financial, or health decisions. I encourage you to follow me on social media, Facebook, and Twitter, and any way that you can share these articles with others is definitely a great help. These are such troubled times and people need hope. John 3.16 tells us about the hope that God has given us through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you have not already done so, I strongly urge you to invite Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior today. This is by Michael Snyder on the Economic Collapse blog. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. I kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.